84. Those that are new, just, just keep in mind that that flood that hit three weeks ago, though it was just a tropical storm, delivered as much rain in a day as in Hurricane Harvey that disrupted this whole city. So everything shifted for us, and 16 out of 19 buildings flooded, and we're getting our stuff back. But I'm noticing stuff. I'm noticing, seriously, we're smarter. We're getting smarter. All the way around. Like, like, take this for instance. I'm driving across a property, and there is a volleyball court with white sand we have. And the last flood that came literally removed, Harvey removed that white sand and put it right down in the opening in the field under grass. So, Kenny, every time I drive across that place, even on a lawnmower, I got this little hump. And it's beautiful white sand under the grass. Well, we replaced it and put white sand back into the volleyball court. And this time the flood came and all that white sand that was there washed right back down on top of the old sand from Hurricane Harvey. Now I got this thick of white sand laying out there in the sunshine and the grass. And I'm driving up on it and I'm staring at it. And I'm looking back and I said, you know, I get it now, God. I'm going to take and move the volleyball court to right here. I'm not moving the poles. I'm not moving the sand back. I'm moving the poles over. Amen. So things that we're doing, we're just trying to, to, try to work with it. Everybody say work with it. Sometimes you got to work with it. We're, we're putting panels in instead of just pickets on the side of the church there. we got eight-foot panels now. Where if it ever happens again, oh, I know what you say, Pastor, don't say if it ever happens again. I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty positive fellow. You know that. But I'm also a realist. Let me tell you how realist I am. I was just in California. And I drunk out of a paper straw. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I ain't drunk out of paper straw since I was a little kid. And, and Lori drank it out of one. All of a sudden, it just snapped in two. It just kind of folded. She had to get two or three of them just to get through her teeth. And, and then if you get them, them metal ones, four people have already died from them metal straws trying to save money and make sure no turtle gets hurt and then shoved it up through their nose by falling on it. So, you know, you know we, we can get rid of humans, but not turtles. Uh, so here, so I'm, I'm, I'm observing everything, this, this common <laughs> This is not common sense, by the way. I was going to start bootlegging plastic straws out there. I thought I might could make some money bootlegging straws. You know, anyway, uh, the point was this. We, we've got a, a world full of people that somehow believe that hugging a tree and getting rid of your hairspray uh, now, first off, I believe we should take dominion over the earth. I think we should mow the grass, trim the trees, uh, do all those things. But here's the, here's the bottom line. The scripture says the earth is passing away. That this earth, that there will be a new heaven and a new earth. So this earth is moaning and groaning, waiting on the redemption of the sons of God, people to rise up and become uh, more like God. So, so the issue here in my life as I'm looking back at it is it's supposed to do this. We're never going to stop flooding. We're never going to stop fires. We're never going to stop hurricanes. We're never going to stop tornadoes. We're going to have uh, earthquakes. The Bible says in the last days there'll be a, a, a more earthquakes. Life. So what we got to do is learn how to live with it and deal with it. And don't let it change your perspective of having a doom and gloom. I'm looking forward to a new heaven. I'm looking forward to a new earth. I'm looking forward to a new body. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't want it right now. So that's why I get shots in my knee and I keep on moving through life. But you've you got to realize in life, many times, you, it's, it's the way you see it. To, this morning I want to talk to you. It's all in how you look at it. Everybody say it's all in how you look at it. Oh, say it again. Oh, look at your neighbor and say it to him. Yeah, it's all in how you look at it. it, it, it your perspective is so important in life. I, I love uh, you know, I, yesterday, I'm a college football fan, you know that. We won't talk about my team right now because, you know, we, we could. But, but, no, leave it alone. But I really enjoyed watching LSU play last night. Now, I normally will never say this to you, but they are looking good. And, by the way, the day before that, I watched the water boy on, on, on TV. And, of course, I love, you know, I, I love me. I love that water boy. That, that, that boy right there, he's some kind of fella. So, my mind goes to Boudreaux. And Thibodeau, and that whole outfit. And Boudreaux went fishing. After a day fishing at a lake near his house, Boudreaux was walking home carrying two big old 
fish, fish, uh, fish in a bucket. And he's approached by the game warden who asks him for his fishing license. Naturally, Boudreaux doesn't have one. He says to the warden, I didn't catch these fishes. These my pet fishes. Every day I come down to the lake and they jump out of the bucket and I let them swim for a while. And when I whistle, they just jump back in the bucket so we can go home. The warden, not believing him, reminds him that it is illegal to fish without a license. Boudreaux turns to the warden and says, well, if you don't believe me, then watch. As he throws the fish back into the water, the warden says, now whistle to your fish and show me that they will come out of the water. Boudreaux turns to the warden and says with a smile, what fish? <laughs> Are you comfortable? <laughs> Psalm 84. Open your Bible to Psalm 84. <clears throat> Psalm 84. There are times in one's life that the scripture that tells us, seek and you shall find, means something about seeking for good. Seeking for the best in something. Not just always seeing the worst in, but learning how to do that. Now, as we've moved through this flood again the second time and, and watching things in life and still doing weddings and funerals and the things of that nature and, and going out and, and being a part of, of what, what God is doing in the world, I realize this. In my life, I have to seek for the good. I've got to look for it because it's so easy to tend toward the, toward the worst of. We watch the news. We, we get embroiled in politics and all of these things. And the next thing you know, everybody has an opinion on all that. But I'm just going to stay culturally minded with the Word of God. Amen. If I stick with the book, I'm going to be fine. Psalm 84, 9, Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. The courts there speaks of, of the house of God. It's better to be here than anywhere else. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. And this is David speaking. He's talking about being in the house, being a doorkeeper. He understood being in the tents of wicked because he'd been there. He had faked madness at one time, and he lived among uh, the Philistines. He knew all about being among the wicked. He said, I, I've been there, but I was would rather be here in the house. Then he goes on to say, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusts in you. Now I'll preach it forever. Trust God, love people. Amen. It's the only way to get through life without getting bitter. Trust him and love people. If you do that, David said, I trust in you. And no good thing you'll hold. If we just walk upright. Just do the right thing. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for an opportunity to be before you folks. Calm me down just a little bit. My heart rate's up a little bit. God, I, I ask you to be calmed down just a little bit. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for this 830 service. I pray that this would be the genesis of, of a good week for everyone in this house, that it will start a bookend of a good week. This is going to be a good week in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Everybody said, it's going to be a good week. Well, make this week. And if this week's good, guess what? It's your fault. If, you, if this week's good, it's your fault. You made it good. No, you, you can watch other people. They'll try to uh, knock you off the tracks, but it's going to be up to you. He uses the word here, good. The word good. I love the word good. It's a 12th century German word that has to do with what one clings to. Hang on to the good. Good of favorable character. Bountiful, fertile, suitable, or fit. Bring it, being positive or desirable in excellent condition or superior to average. When I read this word good, being positive. I'm aware that when life is hard, staying positive is tough. I've often said to folk of late that, that it, for something to have happened so bad, we're making things turn good. Amen. A lot of times life has this effect to turn things away. I'm also aware that, again, this earth is decaying. And because of that, it's going to keep on going. And I, I, my kids whom I love, have bit into this thing. And they, they, they like somehow that if I will just agree with them that the earth is uh, warming up and that things are changing on the earth, if I disagree with them, somehow it's going to change something. I don't have to agree with you to tell you that I don't care. I'm going to say it again. I don't care. I'm going to enjoy the earth. I'm going, to, I'm going to take care of my stuff. I'm going to take care of my property. But I, I don't think my opinion on this matter is going to matter just a whole lot in the end. 
I don't think Washington, D.C.'s opinion on the matter is going to change a whole lot. Eventually, you're going to have to sit back and go, you know what? I think this book is coming to pass. I think what I see in this book is actually happening. I think I see things. I see the last days coming down. I believe Jesus is coming again. I have to believe that. And he's coming for a bride. And it, it's a, it's a, it, how do you, how do you, we, we know on one side, uh, that there's there, the children will turn against parents. There'll be there'll be d- uh, divisions in homes. There'll be destruction. There'll there'll be all kind of uh, earthquakes and all that. But on the other side, you got a bride that's getting herself ready for the coming of the king. She's looking better. Uh, she knows all this is going on. But on the other hand, she's got her eyes on him. And she realizes no good thing is he going to withhold from me if I keep walking upright. Well, how bad is everything getting? Well, it might get bad, but I can tell you this. I'm standing on the book. The book says no good thing. So he going to give me something good. In other words, you got to change the way you think. It's your perspective. You're not robotic. I never could do the robot. I tried it before the prom to get that thing down, and I never could make it work. But I can tell you this. I, it, it does. We're not robots. You have a right to choose the way you see your life. You've got a right to understand that he came to give you life and life more abundantly. And you, if you want to lock into that, you can go through life pessimistic, down, negative. That's your call. Amen. But don't hang out with me because I can't do that. I can't even go there. I, I, I'll be nice to you. I'm not going to put you down about it. I'll listen to you. But it's not going to change my perspective. God is a good God. Amen. And he's always going to be a good God. And I, I, I don't back away from, from the gospel here. Listen to me. To fully understand what holds us back from living to our fullest potential, you have to recognize that most people live life by default. When things go wrong, they just revert back to what they used to be. They just hit the default button. What we or others feel is uh, we, we got this idea it's just it's predestined. And, and I've studied predestination and, and free will. The bottom line is when you think of predestination, in other words, you're saying to yourself, well, this is the way it's supposed to be. This is just the way it is. What I mean by this is they fail to decide how they want their lives to be or have an, uh, an unwillingness to do whatever it takes to make things happen and simply accept things as they are. They believe they have no say or power to affect their course. But the bottom line about living by default is by view is that, in my, my opinion, is that it represents choosing to be a victim. So I just sit back and I act like I'm a victim all the time. That, that it just happened to me. We use the term, say, sirrah, sirrah. All, all of you have used the phrase, well, you know, uh, it really passed or whatever will be, will be. You know, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, it may be now, but we can change our stars. We can change our stripes. We can adjust our thinking. I can say, again, again, I can sit back and look at my house flooded. And all the things, and by the way, the dear things that many of you gave to my family. I'm talking about furniture. I'm talking about uh, little whatnots and cool stuff in my house. Uh, guns, uh, but by the way, I said, they're safe. But, but the other things we didn't get up in the air quick enough and take care of. And I can beat myself up and I can look at it and say, you know what? I think God really hates me. The truth of the matter is he loves me and he's given me a chance to do this thing again. And I'm not going to get down and, and beat myself up. I thank God for the men and women that are there. I, I make one phone call and things begin to happen. Stuff begins to fall into place. People ask me, Pastor, what can we do? And you know what? I'll tell them. I'm not one of those that has this, this shame about, well, no, well, no, no, no. Yeah, if you, don't you dare ask me. Don't ask me what can I do for you. Because I got a list a mile long and you're on there somewhere. So, so, so we get, and I hope you're the same way about other people. Many times folks stay in the doldrums, they stay down because they never ask. We're going to get to that in just a minute. Amen. You know, here, with, with the people living with a positive attitude, and a perspective that shifts. They live by a different set of rules. They know that an upset is just an upset. Their problems are, are assets, and the past is where it belongs, somewhere behind them. They aren't victims. They're victors, heroes, if you will, because they're willing to jump through hoops to live a life that they dream of. I've met people who don't have two nickels to rub together. I've met people with extreme success in life in this same category. They live positively. They find the good. It isn't about how much money you have. It's not. I tell folks all the time, I'm not rich, but I'm wealthy. I'm not rich, but I'm wealthy. 
I'm wealthy with the things of God and friends and, and connections and, and, and kingdom connections in my life. It, it's, 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 and I love it because it rubs off on other people. I was at that Fields of Faith Wednesday night, and, and I don't know if you, some of you, I missed it to you, New Caney. About a thousand people showed up for that Fields of Faith in that stadium. It was a tremendous feeling. The worship was great. All these churches had come together. And I think, this is a little bit of heaven without wearing your church shirt. You know, we all had our church shirts on. I can tell what church you're from by your church shirt. They can sure tell who we were. Amen. So I'm watching all that. It was really good. But there was a man on the field. He was preaching. Oh, his name was uh, Richard Garza, the chaplain of the San Antonio Spurs. And, man, he gave a word. It was good, man. I'm, I'm sitting there, and I was, I was motivated. He talked about Jesus. It didn't matter how much light. You know, he, he'd been before uh, 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 all the big guys, Durant, Westbrook, Harden, all them. He, he's, he's preached the gospel to all of them. They all show up to his meetings. And, and he gave us hope about our athletes. But on the flip side, he told us that Christ was the only answer. Now, the cool thing to me was this. It wasn't that moment. It was when my daughter Jill called me, and who was flying to South Dakota. To, she fly to Tulsa to go to South Dakota to work on an Indian reservation for a week to help there in Pine Ridge. And she's at the airport, and as she's going through the airport in Houston, she putting her shoes back on after going through the conveyor. You know what I'm talking about? It's supposed to change you. It never changes me. Every time I get I say, change me, Lord. It don't change me. I'm the same guy when I come out on the other side. But either way, I keep working on it. Maybe I, I keep putting my wife back through it, back through it. Never mind. It never happened. So, so here I am on this side. And she said, Pastor, I'm putting my shoes on. And I look up, and there is Chaplain Richard Garza putting his shoes on. And I realized we both put our shoes on the same. And she said, I walked over to him. She said, I was at the meeting. And it was just that connection to hear her talk about and the positivity. And so my prayer is that as you move through life, that God keeps connecting you. with. She had that private moment when everybody else would love to have one. God walked her right into it. Finding the good. It's all how you look at it. Everybody say, it's all how you look at it. Now, when you look at the word good, the first mention, always go back to the first mention of something to find out what it really means. God's original intention when, when, when he first mentions something, it's always the way he's going to bring it out. The blood, when you see the blood and the lamb, you'll see him carry it all the way out. When you see God call, telling us to rule and take dominion, he takes it all the way to Revelation. So God often will start at the end of a story and then back up and tell you how the story goes. Pretty cool. Genesis 1-4, and God saw the light. God saw the light. There was no light until God made light. This really gets me. This is that mind-boggling stuff in other words god didn't need light he lived without being around light didn't mean he was in darkness because darkness was created when there was uh, uh, again you see where i'm going so god created light and when he made light he said that's good everybody say that's good in other words he's saying that's positive that has a great influence light has a great influence we the light of the world we have influence we're light not negative we're positive. There's something about it. So he said, that, that's good. And God saw the light, that it was good, Genesis 1.10. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together the waters called he sees. And God saw that it was good. Everybody says it's good. So he sees it again. So, so God has this way of looking at things. Again, God is being very positive or desirable. The good is here. In excellent condition, superior to average. Genesis 1.12, he said there's grass, herbs, and fruit. He called it good. Everybody say good. Verse 18, great light, star, sun, and moon. Everybody say good. Yes. In verse 21, great whales, fish, ocean, deer, fowls of the air. Good, yeah, yeah, yeah. The beast, the cattle, the deer, and the creepy things. Good. Everything he made in verse 31, he said it was good. He didn't say it was well, but that it was good. Romans 10, 13 tells us, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they're going to be saved. And who shall they call in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? And as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of Good things. So this to me, when I'm reading this, it's like, you talk about this moment. I, I'm going to lose my job when I get to heaven. I, there will be no need for me. Are you following that? Yeah. So, but, but that's okay. But while I'm here, God says, here's what I need to do. I need to, a vessel that I can speak through to share good news to people. 
So I need you, Jerry, to talk to them about me. Now, first off, me and you got to get along because if you don't know me, you can't tell them how good I really am. And a lot of times, the only reflection of God that other people see are preachers that stand up front and woe is me. Down, beat down, condescending, uh, belittling, better than, attitude, self-righteous, from the pulpit. I've heard it over and over that somehow, and we elevate them. We elevate them through social media. We elevate people. you got to be careful. Look, this, this guy here is nothing but a conduit to talk about this Amen. great Amen. big creator, God, who sent his son to die for us. You know what that does to me? It makes me feel small. Because I know, and it also scares me. Because now I got, I got to try to translate this thing properly for, so folk can catch it. Because I know when I get home, you're not the one that's going to get the butt whooping. It's going to be me. So that, that, there are times I, I got into this. I thought, boy, this is good. People really, I, oh, look at They love me, this, that. And then I get to reading a book uh, that, that the one that preaches the gospel is going to be the one the most responsible and all of a sudden, I, I want to change professions. <laughs> but like Jeremiah said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. I got to tell you something because I know how good this God is. Amen. Just how wonderful that he created us in his image. And he put us here on this earth to teach everybody that he's a good, good God. Can I get an Amen. Amen. He's good. He's good things. And he's good, good. Good comes from what? Good comes first from those who seek him. If you seek after God, Psalm 34, 10, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. In other words, that, that negative there says that if we seek after him, good things are coming to us. If we pursue him, if I go after him, he's the God of good things. Amen. So much about it. Everything we need comes from the Father above who says, I create good things for you to enjoy. Matthew 6, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. I've said this so many times. Everything we need, air, food, water, relationship, connections, shelter, the main things in life, if I seek after him, he says, I'll provide that for you. Many times we get detoured and we go after things first and we miss him. But if I stay after him, good things are coming my way. Now, if everything got flooded and washed away, it's God saying, I got something better for you. Amen. Amen. So as it goes away, I'm waiting to see what's going to happen. And it's like Christmas to me. It's always exciting. I don't know what's coming up next. I don't know what's going to happen next, but I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to seek after him. Another thing is, good things come to those who ask. Ask and it shall be given. Seek, you'll find. Knock, shall be opened unto you. To everyone that asks receives, and he that seeks finds. Him that knocks, it'll be open. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, you're going to give him a serpent. If you then be an evil Know how to give good gifts. Now, when God says evil, he's not calling us evil. What he's saying is, compared to me, you look evil. As much as you think you do with your kids, you look evil. I know, you think, I know they mess up, you still bless them. They do stuff, you're still out there for them. You're still opening the door for them. You're still taking care of them. He said, no matter what, if you, you that way, now watch this. If you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more? Your Father, which is in heaven, give good thanks to them that ask you. We are so stubborn. We don't ask. We don't knock. We don't seek. We're self-reliant. We pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. We make our way through. And then one day you get knocked down. And you find yourself alone in a hospital because you didn't make no friends. And nobody's calling. Nobody's coming to see you. And you got to pay the nurse just to walk in on you. Then comes a time in your life when you realize, I got to ask God. I got to seek after God. I got to knock on the door if I want to see anything open. That's how I am. I have, I, I have, listen, uh, uh, if the guy coming to pick up my, my truck, it got flooded out on the property. I asked him, y'all got lots of money? 
write this website down. Chase Card calls me, my credit card. Mr. Hovatter, yo, your payment didn't make it. Mm -hmm. And I ain't supposed to expect somebody out in New Mexico to know what happened here in Houston. I said, would you Google the flood of September the 19th? Because my check was in the mail on September the 19th. So evidently, it didn't get to you. So now, for one of the first times in my life, I owe a credit card bill. And they added money on that. Y'all figured this out yet? I ain't, I'm just not figuring it out. They add money to that, and that's how they make their big bucks. So they added money and doubled my, 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 my kickback to them. So she's on the phone. I said, man, look at me. Listen to me. Go Google that. When you find it, find me down there. Realize, she said, you're 100%. You always pay your bills. So that's why we check it off. I said, well, I'm going to tell you right now, y'all got deep pockets. Y'all credit card company. So y'all need to go ahead and take all that money off that y'all trying to steal from me right now. Because I got beat up in the flood. She said, we got you, Mr. Hovatter. We're going to take all. We see y'all got flooded, this, that, and the other. And I said, the check will be in the mail on Monday. But take all that extra off. We got all that off. You know why that happened? Because I asked. I, I, I'm not full. And when it comes to y'all, I am shameless. <laughs> shameless. I will ask anything for God to bless you. I'll ask God to bless this church in so many ways. I've been after Mattress Mac. Only because he pursued me first. I ain't done yet. I'm, I'm, I'm still pressing into places because I realized something. That when, when, you, when you just do the book, if I ask, if I seek, if I knock, good things are coming my way. Amen. And if I stay after it, watch what God does. Now, it's not badgering. Don't badger people. I, matter of fact, I protect those who have from those who don't have, thinking that the, those that don't have keep badgering those that have. Amen. One reason you ain't got is because you don't ask. But anybody just asking people, ask God. And watch him line you up with folk. Watch people start coming into your life. The, you know, there's history. I, I, I got to move on. Come, come on up here, Maris. Let's, let's move on down to, to near the end here. The God of the good things to come. You see that? It's this. Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You may have a job, a career, but what you want to look at in life as you get older is benefits. Because benefits outweigh just that dollar an hour extra, as long as I got benefits. Benefits are, uh, I, live, I live under the shadows of benefits. God has benefited my life. You want benefits in your life. That's a tremendous thing. Bless the Lord. Forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your, here comes the benefits. Here it comes. Forgives all your iniquities. You know what iniquities actually are? They're the sins that your daddy committed and your daddy's daddy committed that were passed down to you through this uh, connection you've got this transference, so that he forgives those iniquities. It may, you, you can say it all day long, but well, it ain't my fault. It's my daddy's fault. There are times, especially now that I've got this little beard working, I look in the mirror, and I see my daddy looking back at me. Mm -hmm. My daddy had issues. He was a good man. I'm not going to uncover my daddy. I ain't going to know no amount of money in the world. Caused me to uncover my daddy. So I'll just give you one little thing. He had anger issues. And the one thing that I've fought my whole life is to keep James Hovatter under control. Mm. To make sure my daddy doesn't rise up in me and I slap somebody and I, I you know, I, I, dog. You hit him and you go, this is really not me, it was my daddy. <laughs> See, those are the iniquities. Now, I don't care how perfect you were as a father. You passed something down. They picked up on something. It could have been procrastination. It could have been uh, lust. It could have been perfection. How many perfection can drive you nuts? Especially if you try to pass that down to your kids. And your kid ain't perfect. And they live the rest of their life under the shadow of a perfect father. And you never gave them permission to fail. He forgives them. All your benefits. He forgives. That's a benefit. All your iniquities. He heals 
all your diseases. He redeems your life from destruction. Life with a few bad choices can lead to such destruction. And God said, I can bring you back up from the ashes. Turn toward me. I'm the God of good things. I redeem my, your life. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. It's like double there. Mercy and grace. Loving kindness. Tender mercy. He satisfies your mouth with. Everybody say good things. And let's talk about taste. The Bible says taste and see that the Lord is good. There's something about this opportunity on, on earth for God to give you these taste buds. He could have gave you a vanilla tongue. And everything you ate. But he could have gave you a broccoli tongue. But God gave you the ability to distinguish whether that's good or bad. And in life, sometimes we, we got to be very careful. I, I, will, I will take something. The older I get, the more I just like good food. It ain't about the amount of food. It's good food. Yeah. Them men cooked all night the other night. That barbecue, pork. Oh, what they did for your pastor was so wonderful. They pulled off just a little bitty tray of burn ends. The little black, crispy burn ends. Last night, in my RV, borrowed RV, not mine. I heated that meat up, put it on a sandwich. I took a bite, and I started praising God. Because He satisfied my mouth with good things. Right. Amen? That's the kind of God we serve. He looks after us that way. Satisfied. Look at it. He benefits, He forgives, heals, redeems, crowns. I call them good things. He satisfies us. Now, let's close with this. For we know. This is why I'm telling you. It's all in how you look at it. It's all in how you look at it. For we know that in all things. That all things work together. For good. To them that love God. To them who are called according to His purpose. Now, you're not going to get away from this. You're going to have to walk upright. You've got to be called to His purpose. You've got to love God. You've got to stay in covenant with Him. You do that, and God said, good things are coming your way. They're coming your way. Now, all things working together for good. So what God is saying to us, that stay positive in the tough times, because this thing that's going on is working with you. In other words, all the things that are going on, just in my life, I don't know about all your lives, but in my life, when I look at the flood and all the things, it's working with me. It's not against me. It's working with me. So a lot of things you think are against you aren't against you. They're working with you for the good. Amen. And it's going to bring out good. Something good's going to come out. Remember what, that he is the God of good things. You, we cling to that. It's positive. Work together. Co-labor. All things will be working with you. So I'm not alone. I've never been alone because something's always working with me. Don't you love going by somebody and say, hey, come help me out. Come work with me. Right. I'm at an age where I don't have the strength I had as a young man. So I'm constantly having to look for help for somebody to work with me. Because so I, I, doing it alone, I can't do it. I, I, I might can, but it's a struggle. But if you work with me, he said, this is going to work for your good. I close with Genesis chapter 50. What a story. There's no greater story than this to prove this point. That is all how you look at it. Genesis chapter 50, verse 18. Before I read this to you, let me remind you that Joseph was sold into slavery as a young boy. Put into a pit. His brothers sold him out of envy and jealousy because daddy liked him more. You are never going, you can lie to yourself all you want, but you will favor those who favor you. And when a child favors you, they become your favorite. If a grandchild favors you, they become your favorite. And somehow Joseph favored his father, and his father favored him. The brothers never picked up on it, never loved daddy back, but they took the boy, threw him in a pit, sold him as a slave. He was forced to serve Potiphar. Now, it's one thing for you to go to work. It's another thing for you to be forced to do it. You have no choice. You, you, you move when the bell rings. You don't quit until the day is over. He's a slave. Slavery is slavery. Then he spent time in prison. 
after a lie was told of him with Potiphar's wife. There in the prison, then he served Pharaoh. After he gave up a, a, the Pharaoh's dream, he interpreted it, he, he shares it. So now he's gone from the pit. Then he goes into Potiphar's house. Then he goes to the prison. Then he ends up in the palace. And then God starts doing something in his life. God starts working in him and through him. And it took years. Everybody say years. Years. See, we try to force this thing to happen so fast, but this thing took years. So as Joseph is maturing, without his dad, without his mom, he could have been bitter. Listen, much as I love you guys, I've heard some of your stories. You've heard mine. We get bitter because of the meanness of relatives and family. We bring it up. We remind, we tell people the reason I'm the way I am is because of my family, my daddy, my mama, this happened, that. And we go on with it. Joseph had every right to say, I, I can't stand my, my family. Uh, he, he doesn't even know that his dad doesn't know what happened to him. I hate my brothers. I'm in this condition. In this, But he never quit keeping his eyes on God. Amen. And as he keeps his eyes on God, the scripture says that his brothers, being in hunger and famine, now, they have left their place, and they've come to Egypt. Because that's the only place of food. And there's a, there's a man there that understands economy that said that when we save up for seven years all our corn and don't eat it all, when we have seven years of famine that's coming, the economy is going to crash. We'll have enough money to make it. Being that way, that's smart. They did it. Now, here's Joseph over all the economy of Egypt. And coming down the hall, it's his brother's. And they don't recognize him. They, he doesn't grow the beard like the preacher. They don't recognize him. He's sitting up there. And the scripture says, this is what Joseph said to his brothers. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. And what did they say? We're your slaves. We made you a slave. But now we, we'll be slaves. They said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me. Well, if you underline your Bible, get this. You intended to harm me. You intended to slander me on social media. You intended to tell people against me. You intended to destroy my life. You, that's what you did. But God. Man, if you can live with a but God in your life. But God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done the saving of many lives in other words let me say it like this had you not put me in the pit this is how I see it now if you not put me in the pit had I not worked all them years for Potiphar had his wife not chased me and had me put into jail had I not stayed in jail through the baker and the butcher and, the, and, the, and whatever all the stuff that went down in jail had I, not been there, had I not made it up here to Pharaoh's court, they made me shave my head bald. I wouldn't have been bald had it not been for Pharaoh. Here I am sitting in the middle of this court. Had it not been for all of that, all these people would have died. God set me up. And all I had to do was see things a little bit different. Change my perspective. Come on, give God praise in here. Amen. <laughs> It's all how you look at it. It's all how you look at it. I don't know if I'm an influencer enough to shift your thinking. My hope and prayer is that one day I will be. Because all I want to do is be a conduit from heaven to talk to you and tell you that when I go through things, I have to step back at times now, Marie, and go, this ain't for me. Hmm. <laughs> yep. It's for you. In you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. That everything I go through in life is selfish for you to keep thinking it's about you. Sometimes you got to look at your kids and say, look, what mama going through right now ain't got nothing to do with me. It's all about y'all. Amen. God's working on me to help you guys out. He put me in this fix to fix you. Amen. Heads bowed, eyes closed for a moment. Lord, I thank you for this house. I thank you for your blessing on your people. I pray in Jesus' name that perspectives would be changed. The way we look at life and what we're going through. And Lord, it may not be a day, a week, a month. It may take years. 
But if you change the way we think, then we're going to see all things working together for good. If we seek you, you're the God of good things. And Lord, we're praying this week for good things. We're praying our mind becomes good. Our bodies become good. Our spirits become good. God, that life would begin to shift and change. And we would see people come into the kingdom of good things. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you need prayer for your body, would you stand where you're at? If you need prayer for your body, stand up. I understand that you, you know, at times your body just hurts. Might have been fighting with his shoulder. Like I said, I had to go this week and get a shot in my knee. That ain't something I want to do. Right. Now you see these folks standing. Some of you around them, I want you to get a hand near them. Stand up here and put a hand on everybody here. Somebody get a hand on Brian there, please. You say, well, Pastor, I'm the one in need right now. Put your hand towards somebody in need. Amen. Put your hand towards somebody in need. Heals all your diseases. How many times have I heard somebody say, I'm cancer-free now, Pastor? Mm -hmm. I went to the hospital to visit a man, James, your, your uh, uh, stepdad. What's, he had leukemia. Now he's no nothing. He don't have it, but he was there with it. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, heal my body. Touch my mind. Give me the ability to see the good when things are bad. I give you praise that all good things come from you. It's working with me. It's working on me. It's working through me. Heal my body. I stand believing that my mind is sharp. My body is well. Diseases have no place here. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now praise Him for the victory. Praise Him for it. Everybody say, by faith. By faith. Did you know they marched around the walls of Jericho by faith? God told them the walls would fall, but you got to walk. Sometimes you got to keep praying. You got to keep asking. You got to keep seeking. You got to keep knocking. Amen. And you got to keep walking around the walls until they fall. You stay on it, but it's by faith. And then he said, What's faith? Hebrews 11 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I hadn't seen it yet, but I believe God for it. Amen. You've got to hang on to that. You've got to believe the Word of God. Be seated for a brief moment. I get our servant leaders to come up. Mm -hmm. Brian and Tina, good to have y'all here. Glad to have you guys here in the house. Just a quick announcement from me, and then David will take over. Again, your faithfulness and giving has been huge. We have an iPad, of course, in the back. You can give online if you're watching us. And uh, you consider us your house, your church, and me, your pastor. Would you give online? Be a blessing to us, uh, to the kingdom of God. And, and by the way, you're just honoring God with your giving. That's what tithing is. Honoring God by with your first fruits. And then the offering always over and above. So important. So if you need to offer an envelope, lift your hand. We're still taking care of our missionaries. We didn't quit taking care of people just because we went through... It'll speed bump. We're going to stay on it. If you have not got your conference shirt, I love these shirts. I wore mine the other night. Church of the Holy Wild. Faith, family, and freedom on the back. Amen. Pick one up in the uh, fellowship hall in the back. Make sure you get you a shirt. They're $15 a shirt or $20 if you want to help us with the flood. Make, make that 50 $50. <laughs> I got to ask big. Amen. That's right. Believe big. <laughs> Amen. Taryn and Taryn, good to have you guys from the valley here with us. Always good to see you girls smiling faces. Uh, praying for our deer hunters that are out there. You're watching online. You're watching on your smartphone today. You out there, you're waiting on Bambi. You're waiting on that big buck. I want to remind you that once you get that deer, the tithe comes back to the storehouse. That's the back strap. So you get the back strap back to the house. <laughs> we'll take care of it, won't we, David? We're praying for a few backstraps of our own this year. Yes, yeah. Lord. So we got Swap Crosby Seniors with a purpose today uh, after service uh, in the Fellowship Hall. See Ken and Linda. 
Y'all raise your hand. If you guys haven't been involved in this and you would like to, I'm telling you, they're an amazing couple. Go hang out. That's what it's about. It's about fellowship. I think you was going to whether I was going to let you or not. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. We'll do it. October 19th, Jewels for Christ. See Miss Diane. Uh, that's just going to be uh, Fellowship Hall. That'll be what, next Saturday? Yes, that's our monthly meeting. The monthly meeting. Okay, yes. Uh, see Miss Diane in the back if you guys want to be a part of that. October 20th, the Ladies Lift Bible Study. That'll be here. See Miss Diane Phelan, and that will be in the Fellowship Hall as well next week. Um, October 20th through the 23rd, 16th Annual Fall Conference. Um, just come out and support it. Invite your friends. Uh, Gary's good. Uh, pastor's pastor. Mike Van Britson, incredible. David Huff. Uh, man, I, I, every time I see him, I'm like, will you please lay hands on me? Because I hope at 70, whatever you are, 95, uh, <laughs> that, that you, I can move and play like that. Not, yeah. not even play. I don't want to play guitar, but just be able to move like he does. Amen. Uh, so October 23rd, again, this is uh, the for the conference. See Miss Judy at the other com at the other campus. See Miss Valerie here where you need lots and lots of desserts. Um, October 27th, Off-Road Misfits. Sunday, October 27th, 2 p.m., Los Compadres Restaurant in Huffman. See Mike Thies for details. And uh, he's in the back with a cowboy hat on. If you don't know who he is, if you like to go off-road, if you like to have uh, rangers or trucks or whatever, just go hang out, fellowship. October 31st will be Trunk or Treat, and that's going to be here this year. It was a lot of fun last year, just watching the kids come through from the community, um, and we're hoping the same thing happens here. Well, let's go our, our youth ministry, our kids ministry. When you have things like this, you never know who you're going to be able to love on that might influence our community. That's why we do it. It's called Outreach. Church wasn't meant to be in these four walls, guys. we got to keep outreaching. So when you have opportunity, just keep telling your friends that Jesus loves them. Keep living it. That's the greatest example. That's the greatest uh, tool that you can ever have to minister to somebody. Amen. Today we're believing God for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts to models, royalties received, favor, success to the kingdom. 